What's up guys, it's Macrons Jones here, also known as D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and the CDS current environment trigger, and today we are going to look at the filter expression parameter that we can pass into this trigger. So the filtering expression parameter allows you to pass in an OData style filter to trigger, to specify whether this is going to trigger or not. So previously we looked at filtering attributes where if one of these changes, the flow will trigger, the filtering expression actually stipulates that you need to pass a expression um, and evaluate to true for it to trigger. So instead of um, creating a trigger and then immediately creating a control for a condition to say um, only trigger if you know the status is this or only trigger if you know postcode contains data, um, you can actually do that in a single step, meaning that you'll have less flow runs and less um, less logs to kind of look through uh, if there are any issues. So that's what this filter expression does. So the filter expression is an OData style expression. Now you can write OData yourself uh, if you are proficient in how to write OData. I know very basic OData style queries and expressions. It's not really something uh, that I've, I've spent a lot of time learning. Um, and the reason I've not spent a lot of time learning is because again, we are blessed with fantastic people in this community. And Mr. Jonas Rapp created a tool um, called the Fetch XML Builder. And in that, it actually allows you to get OData style filters from there. So you can put in your uh, OData style filter here if you know it, or I'm actually going to show you how to use, how to use the Fetch XML Builder to get out a, um, a, an OData style query. So I'm going to switch over to the XRM toolbox. This isn't a full in-depth guide of how to use the XML toolbox and how to use the Fetch XML Builder. This is just a very basic, um, basic me uh, method of, of showing you things. So inside the the Fetch uh, the Fetch XML Builder, I can choose my entity. So in this instance, I'm going to choose account, and then under there, I am going to filter. So in the filter, um, I'm going to add a condition. And in the condition, I'm going to choose a uh, name. So essentially, I'm, I'm going to use the account name. Uh, I'm going to say where the account name uh, equals, uh, and then I'm going to look at my uh, buffer, and I'm going to use Wayne Enterprises. So basically, what this, what this Fetch XML builder is doing is saying, right, return me all accounts where the name equals uh, Wayne Enterprises. So I can actually execute this in here and it's, it's connected to my environment, so I can see it pulls back um, the, the record, there is only a single record, and it pulls me back some data about it. And there we go, it's, it's as easy as that. Now switch back to my Fetch XML. But Jonas, and uh, with the help of a few other community members, I think uh, Mark Carrington also helped uh, with this part of it, um, added in the ability to actually get OData queries out. So once you have your Fetch XML query, and by the way, you can you can open save views from your dynamic system if you're more um, well, you know, more used to creating advanced finds. That's absolutely fine. You can open that from here and and select a view um, in your system, uh, and then it'll pull through the Fetch, and you can do this in exactly the same way. I'm just building this uh, from scratch in here. But if you go up to view. There is a Power Automate Parameters button here, and if you click on that, it will give you the filter query. So not only does it give you the filter query, it also gives you the like the top count as well. So in here, um, this is actually um, fetching only the top 50 accounts. You can remove that if you want, um, or you can use it, um, but it does the same thing. So it, like you know, you have all these different things you can order by, you can expand the query, you can get all these parameters through the Fetch XML Builder, which is fantastic. This is a tool I use on a near daily basis. So thank you, Jonas, and thank you to anyone else that was um, involved in building this. So um, once I've got my Fetch XML, all my advanced find created, and once I put it into here, and once I click on that button and click Power Automate Parameters, I can click Filter Query. If I click that, that copies that query to my uh, clipboard. And then I can go back to my um, my flow, and then in the filter expression, I can copy and paste that in. So name 
EQ stands for equals Wayne Enterprise Instant Science single quotation marks. So I have created an OData style query using the fetch XML builder, not writing it myself. And I can make this a lot more complicated. I can add in duids, I can you know add in direct content, I can do, you know, I'll try to add direct content, but I can do a lot of different things with this to, to add filters into it um, and make it a lot more complicated than I have here. But that's all I'm dropping in for now. So what this what this flow will do is if I create or update a record, if the name equals Wayne Enterprises, it will run. If the name does not equal Wayne Enterprises, it will not run. So let's test this out. So I'll just test. I'll perform the trigger action. And we'll just give that a second so it knows it started. So I found out about my dynamic system. I have my list of my accounts here. I can create an account. So I can create an account called um, test3, for instance, save and close. Um, I can go to Acme Incorporated. I could uh, update the um, account number, update the telephone number, um, hit save, save and close. Yeah, I know there's a duplicate. I need to sort that out. Um, I can do all these things. And if I flip back to my flow, it's not running. It's not triggered. It's not running. It's not doing anything because the name um, does not equal Wayne Enterprises. So if I go to Wayne Enterprises, I know account name is name. So name is the schema name. So name is the OData name that it's requesting. I know that, that is what's triggering this. So only accounts where the name equals Wayne Enterprises. Um, and by the way, it doesn't need to be name. I could have had account number equals a certain number. I could have had status equals like active or inactive or something like that. It doesn't matter. Um, I just chose name for ease. So where account name equals Wayne Enterprises, if I update, so if I just check, still not running, great. If I just update account number, hit save, and we'll hit ignore and save. Again, because we've got a duplicate. Um, and go back to this. In a second, I should see this run. There we go, it's run successfully. Um, we expand this and we can see the account number's been updated here uh, and it's only run because the name equaled Wayne Enterprises. So again, expand this, you can see the filter expression is name. EQ stands for equals Wayne Enterprises. You can build this to be as, as complex as you need it. Um, so you can use the Fetch XML Builder or you can build an advanced find and then use the Fetch XML Builder to look at that view. Um, or you can copy and paste your your, um, your XML in, etc. Um, and you can use that parameter to then pull out um, your filter expression. So I think when Jonas originally you built this, it was to do with list records um, and because that allows you to um, uh, use Fetch, use O data style queries to fetch specific records, um, but it works in this uh, in this trigger as well to actually create O data style queries to then do this. So big thank you to Jonas, big thank you to everyone else in the community that contributes to that. You have been a lifesaver when it's come to generating O data, because as I said, it's just not something I've had a chance to learn. Um, not to say I won't learn it in the future, but there's a lot of other things I want to learn first. So thank you, Jonas. Thank you, everyone else. But there you have it. That is an easy way to trigger a flow specifically um, on, on filter criteria. So we could filter it by attributes, which is shown previously, uh, which will only run if something is changed. But this specifically will check to see whether um, you know, this query evaluates true. And if it doesn't, it just doesn't run. So it doesn't matter, um, you know, what you do, it doesn't run unless this evaluates true, which again will save you a lot of your flows firing incorrectly or taking up a lot of time. Because it used to be in the dynamics days, we would trigger a record based on a change of a field. The first thing we would do um, in sort of a best practice style thing was to have a check condition to see if it, if it matched the criteria. If it didn't, then we'd just stop the work workflow there, but you'd still have all these workflow runs going all the time. Because flows are actually capacity based or they were capacity based at least, this would allow you to stop that. But anyway, it stops all that noise that you'd usually see from having so many um, flows running all the time. So 
I hope that was useful. I hope you now know how to get OData out of your system really, really easily. Um, it is a fantastic, uh, a fantastic tool. I highly, highly recommend you download and use the Fetch XML Builder. Um, it is fantastic. So, uh, with that, I hope this was useful. If you did find it useful, please like and please share it with your friends. That would be appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.